It is time to head back to the squared circle, the TWA squared circle, and play some Mat Mania. Uh, I have played this before on YouTube, and I might have done this once or twice on Twitch, but I like revisiting this game every now and again because of the personal significance that, uh, that it has in my life uh, when I played this, and I'll certainly get into those stories for those who might have forgotten. Let's go ahead and get started. Corey's just awesome down there at the, uh, at the TWA desk. Talking with his hands. Ding. So obviously this is a wrestling game. Um, and it is a game that I played when I was in high school. Uh, it's the first time I played it. And I was bad at it to start with. But over the years, I got a little bit better. And I really enjoyed, uh... I really enjoyed kind of learning the ins and outs, although there is one character in this game who will always be my nemesis. This guy. And we'll get to him. Uh, just... Ugh. Ooh. So, if you haven't played this before, I mean... It, it's a wrestling game. I mean, there's there's nothing like overly special about it. Uh, there are different wrestlers, and you'll see the different wrestlers. There are different moves that you can do, both grapple moves and strike moves, uh, punches and kicks. Um, the special grapples, like the pile drivers and the suplexes, there are only so many you can do before you get reversed. And there's no way to reverse the reversal, so you kind of have to get a feel for when you can pull off certain moves and that you're going to get countered. Um, so you have to be pretty strategic. Usually once you get three strikes in a row on someone, they'll get tired. Oops, that didn't go well. Here, I can probably go up to the top rope. And these, you can only usually do two in a row. Uh, now, it makes sense if you're if it's a squash match that you might want to think that you just want to end it. But the thing is that in order to get some high scores, you need to keep pulling moves off. Oh! Oh, that could be bad the top. Uh, maybe not. There we go. One. Ah. And you can't get down from the top rope once you make a mistake. Let's see, do I have enough? I do. And woo! Always want to do the flying body press to uh, pin because you get extra bonus points when you land that. This is another one of those games there is not an ending. There is a little bit of a cutscene that you might see if I get far enough, uh, but it is an endurance event. Alright, here we are. Coco Savage, this guy has taunted me for 30 plus years, and you just saw why. He has this devastating sh uh, shoulder block that you can do nothing about, and he does them in rapid succession. So, the idea is just to wear him down. See, but even there, he reversed me. Oh, just got housed. He's gonna throw me off again. Okay, that's kind of crazy. I only took... Not long. <laughs> so there are five characters all together you have to face. Uh, after the fifth character, you'll see what happens. Because from here, although the Piranha, or the Piranha, uh, is a little bit of a cheater, uh, it's not too difficult the first time through. Usually, the if you're able to get the first grapple, you can usually... Uh, you can usually get a special, like, 
think I mentioned one of the, uh, either the pile driver or the suplex. And I'm already kind of housing this guy. I'm going to back off a little bit. Catch my breath. See if I can get the second. There we go. Now he'll reverse it. No? Okay. So we'll go back over here. We're only we got two minutes left, so we do have time to uh oh. look out! Oh, that might be it. You get five thousand points after winning a match. So we're at almost fifty thousand after four matches. That's not awful. And now, as you can see here, Golden Hulk. Gee, I wonder who that's supposed to be. Uh, he's got the belt, so this is a big title match. Corey's going nuts down there on the TWA desk. Music changes. And this guy is as close to your equal as you're going to get at this point, and it makes sense. This is basically your boss character, even though Coco Savage is much more cheap. And... In the arcade, uh, Coco Savage can really house you. When I used to play the arcade game in Greenfield, like, getting the Coco Savage, like, I, I got past the first two characters and I was good. But once you get to Coco Savage, it is very much up in the air. If you know how to kind of play cat and mouse with him so that he's not able to get you with the shoulder blocks, then you have a chance. But otherwise, um, it is very touch and go. And I can tell you from experience that when I would get to him when I was at Call's Corner, when I was at the small arcade, I would always get nervous. I would try and psych myself up. I mean, he's not going to beat me this time. But more often than not, I did not emerge victorious in those matchups. He housed me pretty good. Usually the matches were a bit closer. Alright, let's just finish this guy off. One. Two. There we go. 64,000 through five matches. That will give me the title. As you'll see here in just a moment in an early sample of a cutscene. Squeak. <laughs> and from here, it's just title defenses now. Oh, are you kidding me? Well, this could be very short. So a couple of things that happen here after you win the title. Uh, one of those is that uh, the characters move faster. So you're not able to stay out of the way of strikes, which can be really, really painful. Like he just turned me around there. That's going to be one and a half. Oh. Wow, that's... Ooh. Oh. And see what I mean about those shoulder strikes? Just, there's nothing you can do. Oh, no! I can't believe I did that. Alright, time to just end it. Right in the center of the ring. There we go. Alright. So, at least we get him out of the way early. Now, these wrestlers that take you on in title defenses is completely at random. Although, I've not seen the same character twice. So, usually you get a little bit of a reprieve. But it's possible after Golden Hulk, I get Coco Savage again. Uh, the game is very easy to learn, it's, it, it's really not difficult, and depending on the arcade settings... Oof, that's a big boot. Uh, depending on the arcade settings, uh, you should be able to get through the first two characters uh, with little difficulty. Karate Fighter can be a little challenging at times, but you should be alright. But once you get to Coco Savage, all bets are off. Oh, this could be a mistake. High-risk maneuver. Now we'll let 
the Hulkster get up here eventually. Let's see if I'm going to be able to get it one more time. One. Usually he get. So you can't overdo it. Ah. But here it's just about try. Oh, come on, dude. So usually you can't. It doesn't look like I can take advantage of the. Uh... Ah. Cheater? Uh oh. Oh, and there's the big. There's a leg drop. There's another one. Uh, this could be it. Alright, time to finish him here. Because I don't have much left. You heard the music change. That's probably closer than it needed to be. Once the music changes, that means that your energy is just about out. You don't obviously have any mirrors on the screen, so you have to be listening for that. Ah, uh, Insane Warrior. And that's a big change already. Oh! Is that, um... You can't land that early big move like you could in the, uh, early in the game when you face him the first time. So that's significant. Oh! Up we go. And I think I'm gonna back up. Eh, nope. Get him? Alright, now. Oh, whoop. oh, good. One more. And then we will finish him off. Whoa. I don't know, and that's weird. You notice how my score just jumped up from like 95,000 to 130,000? So what, that's a 35,000 point power press, or, or uh, flying body press? I don't understand why that is. I'm not going to complain if I'm going for a new high score here, but it's something I didn't expect, and I don't... Sometimes with games, you don't understand how the bonuses work. They just kind of happen. You're like, oh, really? Okay. So here, what you want to do... Because the big moves don't work off the jump... Is just go with body slams. So that's four in a row. And notice how I body slammed them four times, and the guy just gets up like it was nothing. Now I'll let him get up. Now he'll reverse it. Yeah. That's okay. Pound driver. Body slam. Can I get one more? Nope. Press. Let's just finish it. So that gets us to one, just shy of 150. It's not bad. So I don't know if you can spot him in the crowd, but if you're looking around in the crowd, Darth Vader's out there. Uh oh. <sighs> Might have to spot him real quick because this game may be over very quickly. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> like, if this was released in 2020, like, Disney would be all over this game for copyright. Ugh. Ow! Ow! What is that? See what I mean? Like, he j he's such a cheese. He'll obviously get up low before me. Now I kind of have to wait it out. Uh. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna try and pin him. 
He's on the ropes. Yes! Alright. I'll take it. I just want to get through him and be done. Yeah, Darth Vader is there. Everyone's just kind of talking to each other, although they're talking like Muppets. So as I mentioned at the top of the uh, at the top of the broadcast, and I've mentioned it a few times, this is one of the games that I played in high school uh, at a convenience store called Calls Corner, which is where I also played ER Kung Fu, which I think I did on this channel, um, and several other games. It was a uh, really cool place, honestly, and I spent what money I had. I spent either on arcade games or on junk food at the store. Um, my brother and I, my, my younger brother, it's all there is, uh, would go and we would buy junk food there. Hey, hey, uh, especially during football season. And I can't even tell you what we got. We got uh, Hostess Donuts, they were the powdered ones, and we got uh, Sprite. What we would do is on, uh, on football Sundays, we would bring that back to the house and we would go upstairs to our room. We had a TV in there, and we would uh, just munch on junk food and watch football on Sundays. Um, oh, let me go. Uh oh, all right. Prania is giving me some issues here. All right, I think we're done. Let's go over here, and I'll finish the story in a second. One, two, three, there we go. Uh, my brother and I did play some games together. Uh, I had my, my Commodore 64, so that's what we played on for a long time. Uh, I talked about on Twitter the fact that my brother had a, uh, or bought a TurboGrafx-16 for the Christmas of 89, so basically 1990 more or less. Uh, so we uh, played a little bit of that. I was still playing the Commodore 64 more than, than his console. Uh, and I was not a good brother. Um, I did not show mercy at all. And my brother uh, was born in 77, so we were about five years different in age. And understandably so, there would be times that my brother would get upset and we'd play. I think the, the worst of it, um, we played uh, international hockey on the Commodore 64, and he never won a game. Uh, it was kind of mean, honestly, when I look back on it now. But video games uh, were something that my brother and I had in common for a long time. Fortunately, that kind of fell by the wayside when he got older. I guess it was just a, kind of a phase for him, or it was, it was a serious hobby for me. But uh, taking those trips to Call's Corner are definitely memorable uh, for not just the arcade games, but also for just for you know the snacks and things when we had the money. And when we pooled our allowance together, we were able to get some cool things. Like I mean, we probably bought way more than we should have. All right, lucky thirteen, which means I got to face this. Jerk again. Let's see, you gotta get him over twice. One, two. Alright. I gotta keep my distance. Social distancing. And he still turned me over. Come oh, come on, man. And I like how he punches me like right in the dome. I should be able to get him over now. Ugh. And it's just, he doesn't stop. Once he starts landing that stuff, there's nothing you can do. Right, I'm gonna try and pin it and see how I do. Ugh. Flying press. Yeah, alright. We are on our way to 200k. Sweet. Um, so that was this was this was in Greenfield. Um, I never really saw this game in arcades much outside of that place. 
I don't know how popular this was. It was even popular at all. Uh, but I, I did enjoy playing it, even though I wasn't very good. The few times that I did beat Coco Savage, uh, it was a big deal. Because <laughs> once I beat Coco Savage, I was pretty much golden, and that's how this game works, honestly. Ooh, take that elbow. Because the, everyone else is easy. Even when the characters are getting faster, like we like we see here. Ah, throw me outside the ring, jerk. Um, the rest of the game is simple. Now I have another connection to this game other than uh, uh, other than Calls Corner, and that is that there is a sequel of sorts. They kind of versus or versus this game up, and they called it Mania Challenge, and basically it was a primarily a two-player game, although you can play single-player. Uh, a couple of the characters were different, a couple of the characters were the same, uh, and the big boss character in that game, I think was his name was Dynamite Tommy, it was basically a mirror image of yourself. It looked a little bit different, but could do pretty much everything you could do. The other thing about that game was that was notable was that you could do reversals in that game, whereas you can't hear. Uh, so that was a pretty big thing. And the reason that that game is notable to me is because uh, I, back when Twin Galaxies was a thing, I had a, uh, a record in that game that was recognized by Twin Galaxies for years. And in fact, it, if Twin Galaxies was still a thing, it would still be... Darn it. It would still be acknowledged as a record. I had like 1,243,000, something like that. I played the game for at least an hour. Um, oh, you know, I can stay out here and mess with you a little bit. There we go. Now I'll get back in the ring. Uh, so that's kind of the connection. This was the first game, obviously, and then Mania Challenge was kind of like an adaptation. I don't even know if... I'd have to look. I don't know if I would know for sure, but... Um, let's just finish him off. Um, or whether it's kind of like Empire Strikes Back was for Star Wars Arcade Mission Conversion Kit. That's what I was thinking of. Um, so I enjoyed that a lot. That was a game I played up at uh, up at Fun Spot. That's where the events were. Uh, you probably heard about uh, or uh, you've heard about the Fun Spot arcade. Whether you watched King of Kong or maybe uh, you've seen some uh, video game personalities talk about this arcade on Twitter before. It is fantastic. Um, there were just so many great games up there to play. And back when I was doing this in 2000 and 2001, it was just it was a great time. Um, and getting to see all of these video game luminaries was really special. Uh, even though some of them have fallen way out of favor since. Um, you know, I got a chance to meet Billy Mitchell, I got a chance to meet Todd Rogers. Uh, both guys, of course, have long since uh, fallen under heavy scrutiny for accusations of cheating, which is unfortunate. Um, while I didn't really talk to, to Billy all that much, uh, Billy and I hail from the same hometown, so I always thought that that was pretty neat. But um, that was in the early part of the 2000s, and from there, um, things kind of changed in my life. Uh, oh, you jerk. So I didn't, I didn't wind up going back to uh, to Fun Spot until like years later, um, and they had it was a different kind of event then when I went. Whoa! But getting back up there and trying out those games like Star Trek uh, Strategic Operations Simulator and Dragon's Lair and uh, and Track and Field. Uh, it was definitely awesome. If you have a chance to get up to New Hampshire and hit that arcade, I, I strongly recommend it. But that's that's the the significance. It, it's really a, a dual dual reasoning between playing this so much in high school being important, obviously, and then uh, 
being a recognized record holder on a conversion kit for this game is a pretty big deal as well. So we're starting to see now that these characters are starting to get faster. Uh, which can be a problem. Because as they get faster, it's tough to kind of dance around the ring with them. And if you get into punching matches with them, you see what happens. And we're very close to my record, so... Uh, at least on PS4, so I... Hoping I don't screw the pooch here. Oh, well, I did get him. He still got up before me. Uh-oh. Alright, can I get him? Oh, that was unintentional. Okay. Alright, I gotta just knock him down and pin him. Because I am almost out of gas. There we go. Oh, no! Can I get him over? Yes. That should do it. If I beat him, it's a record. There it is! 284 and counting. Man, we've been playing now for... 25 minutes? Ah, oh, this will be it, though. I had to jinx it. I had to say, oh, I'm doing so great, and now I'm, I'm done. Like, there are certain things, like death, taxes, and like Coco Savage kicking your ass. That's pretty much uh, a given. I have lost to other wrestlers before, but very uncommonly. Ugh, turn me over again. Like, you can't, you can't defend against that. Ugh. Press. Wow! Yeah, that's gonna be it. I might be able to, uh, no. Oh my gosh. Notice how I'm staying down on the mat longer. <laughs> Ugh. That's it. The music's changed. I'll get time to kick out once. And now, I have. if he knocks me down again, it's game over. I'm not even close to being... to pinning him. Get up, get up, get up, get up! That's it. Uh, once he does that, it's game over. That's it. So, I set a new personal best on the PS4 here that you have to watch. Not bad, uh, getting about 27 minutes or so, and then we get the uh, we get the credits here. That's a pretty good run, I think. Um, and any time that you're putting one quarter in and you're getting almost a half an hour's worth of play, kind of like I talked about with track and field, that's, that's pretty good. So I'm going to have myself some water here. name up to go with the others. Oh, that is the not only the best score, but that's also the most number of rounds that I got through, so that's pretty good. Didn't even expect to set a record this time, honestly. Here it is. So that's not bad. Yep, we will go ahead and send that along. Uh, so yeah, that is a, a look at Matt Mania here. I may go one more time, although I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to do much better. This isn't a game like Track and Field that I can milk over an hour on. Really, if you're getting 20 minutes and one credit, you're doing pretty well for yourself. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll go one more since we're only 30 minutes in. Um, so, changes since yesterday. Um, I was really excited about going back to school. I talked about that yesterday. Um, and today things changed. Uh, and things did not change for the better. Uh, long story short, um, the college that I applied to that had accepted me, uh, there was an issue with financial aid, and isn't that always the way when you're talking about college? That's just kind of par for the course. And, and finally, financial aid issues have kind of dogged me throughout when I've been going back to school. And I have to be understanding of that because this is something I'm not paying for. These are either, uh, these have been mostly grants or other things that I've gotten to be able to go back to school. This is really the first time, though, that the college, when they submitted my financial aid stuff to me, they told me that I was going to need federal loans, and I, I have to admit, I, I kind of, I, I looked at that, and I, I, I looked twice, because I, I couldn't believe that it was being said. I, when I had gone to school in 2015, or 2012 through 2015, um, I was getting enough money through grants to be able to take even full-time classes and not have to pay money out of pocket at all. So it was a little unusual uh, and, a, and a little surprising to hear. Whoops. So when I saw it, I, I called up the financial aid office and I talked to a very nice gentleman. Um, and unfortunately, the conversation only confused me more. And, and looking at the math, um, for three courses, it was good. for three courses, and they go by trimesters, which is a little weird. Usually, when I went to college, it was a, a fall semester and a spring semester. So this is going to be like three terms in a year, and um, it was going to be nine hundred and sixty dollars as a base for each class. Um, but I get a discount on that, or they advertise a discount on that because I was part of a National Honor Society in college because I had done so well. Um, so it was going to be $890, basically. So $890, if you multiply that by 3, or if you just round up, or, or you multiply it by 6, is like $5,400. Uh, and my... The grant that I was getting from the from the federal government uh, was for 55. So if you look at the whole year, my year really and granted books would have been more, but my year should have been completely paid. So when the financial aid guy told me that that wasn't the case and if I didn't use loans, I was going to have to pay money out of pocket, uh, it made me pause because that didn't make a lot of sense, and I. I just don't know that I'm going to do that. Um, I'm pushing 50. I'm 48 years old now. It would take me three years, maybe a little bit longer, to get my bachelor's degree because I do have some credits that carried over from when I went to college originally. But I got. I want to be careful with federal loans because, well, I don't really want to be paying college loans when I'm like 60. Um, I certainly do want to go back to school. Uh, I would have been going to school for computer science instead of education, because uh, education uh, degrees require in-class education, or in-class, uh, in-school attendance, basically. And this guy's kicking my butt for some reason. That needs to stop. Um, so I decided to change my major for two reasons, and I had discussed this on stream before, but just as a reminder, the first reason um, was that I'm not sure what's going to happen with education with this whole um, health situation and the fact that there are so many states that have cut budgets. They're going to be firing teachers and paraprofessionals left and right for the fall. I'm reasonably certain I'm going to be one of those that's going to be jobless come September. So, 
I was trying to future-proof myself, thinking that if I went to school for computer science like I had started to do back in 2012, um, that I would at least set myself up to do something else, and if education was still a thing, by the time I graduated, then I could take a teacher certification exam and maybe be a technology teacher. Um, so that was my thinking. Yeah, I still want to stay in education. If I have a way to do it, that's what I'd love to do. Because the last five years have been just fantastic, even despite the issues that have plagued not only students, but teachers this year. This has easily been the most challenging year, but for reasons beyond anyone's control. So if I had a, if I had a choice, um, if I had a way to make that happen, I would definitely want to stay in education. Being a technology teacher makes the most sense. But in order to do anything like that, I have to get my bachelor's degree, and that involves going back to school. And I thought that this would be the right answer. And unfortunately, and it is a, you know, it, it's a for-profit organization, um, and I'm familiar with how they work, and I'm sure they're trying to, uh, they're, they're trying to get their money out of the deal. There are some things they're not telling me, or there are some things that were explained that I just didn't understand. But, you know, taking on, taking on federal loans right now just isn't a thing. It just isn't. Because I also don't know what's going to happen in, like, a year. I was thinking that if I went back to school, even if I took the year, seeing it was as it was going to be pretty much a loss. If I wind up having to find another job somewhere outside of education for a little while, you know, this would be a good way for me to stay sharp. And then if things recover in like two or three years, kind of get back in, I'd only be in my low 50s at that point. And I could still, you know, I could teach until I'm 70 as long as I live that long. And I, I, I'd love to do that. Whoa! But, um... I kind of need the degree to do that. I'm just gonna finish it off. So, that was a disappointment. Um, part of it's on me, though, because I, I really kind of put my eggs in one basket. You know, I, I applied at this university. It was really uh, reactionary more than it was, I probably could have done some more research, and I didn't. Um, I just said to myself, with the, with this whole situation, you know, I need to do something, and this is a good time for me to look into going back to school. But, uh, I got the acceptance letter, and I had seen that my financial aid form that you have to fill out for the federal government had gone through, and that, uh, and at the, the, what it is, it's a Pell Grant, if you know what that is. They award Pell Grants to people that don't make enough money in a, in a calendar year. They're basically, like, of need students. And that's me. So, oh boy. He should be able to kick out of that, I think. Here we go. Um, so I had enough. I had $5,500 for a school year, which is quite a bit. Again, this was enough... Now, granted, it was community college, but it was enough to get me through two full-time semesters. And that included books. So even if I was in a situation... You gonna get up? Even if I was in a situation where I had to cover the books on my own, um, or if it was like a, a, a small amount of money out of pocket for the year, like, I would have considered it. But, like, they're talking... If I don't get loans, they're talking, like, 700 plus dollars, and that's not including books, and I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, especially considering if I went back, if I was doing computer science, which is what I was planning on doing, like, the first thing I would need to do is I need to upgrade my laptop. And that, you know, I, I could have used some loan money for that, I guess. Um... Because the money that I'm getting now for the you know, the last two or three paychecks that I'm getting before the before the school year ends is just going toward 
savings to be able to get through the summer and maybe a little bit longer. Um, so getting a laptop, like I would have used, you know, I would have used some some money for that, or I would have paid the the extra for books or whatever was needed if it was just that. But that's really not what the case is here, at least according to what I was told. So, long story short, or the TLDR version, like, ow. It doesn't look like school's gonna happen. Um, I'm still evaluating my options, like how I wanna go. I still have that, that Pell Grant open to me. So, you know, I have to tr see if I can find a school that I'd want to go to, and I'd have to figure out my plan of attack. You know, I'm not just going to go to school just to take college courses and be done with it. I really need to have a, um, a plan. <laughs> so that's what's going on in the school front. Unfortunately, we just kind of hit a wall. Um, the other thing about this college was they wanted to start in, um, Oops. They wanted me to start in late June, and that's going to be complicated because um, there's a good possibility that I'm going to be moving. And I talked about that in the last stream. I'm going to be moving out of this um, this house that I've been uh, that I've been living in for the last nine years, and moving into a different place. <clears throat> this house is not mine. It belongs to a family member. In fact, that family member is flying home from Florida tomorrow, which means that today was the last day that I will be venturing out of the upstairs area here <laughs> for two weeks um, because of quarantining and making sure that I'm staying as healthy as I can stay. So that kind of complicates matters. <clears throat> It's not something that I didn't expect, but um, it definitely makes things difficult. I'm going to be um, basically sequestered in two and a half rooms for the next 14 days. You can stop punching me in the head anytime, by the way, there, Coco Savage, and I'd be good with that. <clears throat> so, the move... Um, I'm going to be talking to. Uh, I'm going to be talking to all parties involved. You know, the the apartment is is open, or will be open in the middle of next month. Nah, I might be done here. Oh, you jerk! If he cycles back, I'm in trouble. He did, and he's going to leave. Um, but the in the apartment that I've been looking at uh, will be available in the middle of uh, next month. So. Moving wouldn't be an issue. Oh, oh no. I should have pinned him. Now I'm done. Maybe I can get out of this? No, nope, I'm done. Um, but I kind of have to see what happens with that. But that's the general idea, is that I'd be moving out the middle to end of next month. Uh, so there'd be an interruption in terms of, um, in terms of streams and in terms of, uh, in terms of unsealed stuff for a little bit until I get myself situated. Um, it's going to be a massive undertaking. Um, I have all the retro games to, to pack up. There are 3,000 of those, um, so I'm going to need a lot of boxes. And hopefully in the new place I'm trying to draw up the um, how things are going to work. We'll do this one more time, why not? Um, but it's going to take some time to get into the new place. And just knowing that that's going to be happening the middle to end of June, and then I'd be starting college, like, right away, I'm not sure that's something I would be able to do well, or I'd have to catch up or ask the professor for extensions, and that's a really bad look when you're doing it, like, your first semester there. So, that's a look at the school thing, that's a look at the moving thing. Um... Con content will still be coming uh, during my time of being sequestered here, since I do most of my stuff at night anyway. Um, you know, I'll still be doing my work for the middle school and attending my classes like usual. Like, it won't be obvious that I'm going to be stuck up here, except I'm probably going to be looking a bit more haggard. <laughs> I'm going to be getting, like, takeout for two weeks. 
because I don't have a refrigerator up here. So it's gonna be interesting. I, I all my clothes are washed, so I'm gonna be I'm not gonna be doing laundry for 14 days. Um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. That's it. Oops. That was over a little bit quicker than I was ready for. Uh, so, that's school. That's, um... That is the living situation. Um, I talked a little bit last night uh, on social media and here on the stream about uh, some really exciting stuff that's going to be going on in terms of writing. Um... The bat signal has gone off, and I've been summoned back to active duty. Uh, if you don't know, uh, I was one of the contributors for a certain Super Nintendo guidebook uh, that was published uh, last year. Or was it two years ago now? Uh, no, it was, it was last year it was published. We finished up two years ago. Um, so we're, you know, we have many of the original team members back together. We have some new blood, too. Uh, the platform, obviously, is different. We're not doing Super Nintendo again. It's already been done. Uh, I don't want to go into too many spoilers about what the platform is going to be, uh, but I've already started to make my arrangements in terms of getting the appropriate controller, for example, um, and getting that to work in a variety of different situations. So, uh, as a matter of fact, that controller is going to be on its way to me this week. So I should have it uh, within the next two weeks. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, it's going to be less intensive than the Super Nintendo guidebook was. For the Super Nintendo book, I wrote 88 reviews uh, at 400 words apiece. So I, I had to spend time playing 88 different games. Um, I had to take screenshots for all 88. Um, and then you had to do the reviews. And then if there were any, uh, if there were any corrections or any edits that the editor or the project manager wanted fixed, you had to do those too. So um, I'm just going to pin it. Uh, so we're looking at about a quarter of, well, no. Um, it's, it's less than half that. Be looking at probably about 25-ish reviews for this particular book, which is manageable because the deadline is a year. Which it basically it boils down to, will you stop doing that, you jerk? Um, which boils down to about three reviews a month. Or basically like a review a weekend, which shouldn't be bad. Um, I'm going to be the sports guy again too, which gives me a little bit more leeway. Um, because sports games don't necessarily have endings. So they're a little bit easier to play for review. you got to stop doing that, man. You're really ticking me off. Um... I am looking forward to that. It's been a while since I've done... Oh, man. Am I going to lose? No, I'm going to body press. There we go. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to returning to that scene. Um, of course, like, life can't be easier. Come on. Kick out. Pin him. Oh! Are you kidding? Well, this is intense, actually. Got him. There we go. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting back to that, getting back into a routine. Um, the editor slash proofreader is different this time, so I have to get to know him. But uh, kind of getting back in the saddle again will be good. Um, and I won't lie, like, the extra money will be helpful. So, um, but I I've started that preparation process, and I'm looking forward to getting started. My goal over the next uh, week or so is going to be to just go through the list of games that need to be covered and figure out which games I want to do, even though I already know what a lot of them are going to be. Because um, no one else wants them. 
that's one of the things about books like this is, and I felt this way about the Super Nintendo book too. You jerk. Is that like sports game? Nobody wants sports games. Like they're like the scourge of video game reviews. Anyone who's reviewing stuff like the sports stuff, nobody wants to cover it. When people talk about games, even if they're retro, no one really wants to talk about sports games at all. Unless they're like the typical ones, like your Tecmo Bowls or Tecmo Super Bowls and your NBA Jams and your, uh, your NFL Blitzes, things like that. Um, and that's too bad. You know, one of the things that I wanted to do, and it's a regret that I've had, was when I started the Retro Referee Project in 2015, you know, that was really going to be my goal, was to just talk retro sports games. There have been a few people that have tackled that area, but it hasn't been widely focused on. And I spent time, and I had a good deal of time, and a good deal of resources accumulating a bunch of retro sports games. And unfortunately, the project just never got off the ground. Um, I started working on the, on the guidebook not long after that. Um, I was also, my job was like changing. And I had, uh, can I get him over? No. Where I was um, working when I wanted to as a substitute teacher, meaning that you could basically just accept assignments and work as many shifts as you could find, or as few as you wanted to take, depending on you know, how adventurous you felt or how much money you needed. Um, and I moved from that line of work when I accepted the uh, the offer to write for the book to working full time, and there was a lot going on behind the scenes, uh, and it kind of continued throughout the book. And I, I talked a little bit about this when the book was done. Um, you know, I, I had to uh, put my dog down while that uh, while the book was being worked on. I had some health issues that I had to battle through, which didn't help with getting the book done. Um, so it was a challenge uh, to get that stuff done, and I still managed to get everything done within the deadline. And I had 85 games originally assigned to me. I took three more for the project manager. Um, so I wound up doing 88 total. Um, so this should be easier. You know, if I'm looking at 25 instead of 88, that is a considerable, uh, that's a considerably less amount. Um, but the system is different. And the games are different, the games are a bit more intricate, uh, so I'm going to need to spend more time on those. So I'm hoping to start really working on the book uh, in July. That's the general expectation. Um, by the time uh, the project manager and the, and the, uh, and the editor slash proofreader start to get the games assigned to people, um, that's when I think that we'll be able to start in earnest, which would be good, because that's going to be when I'll be in the new place, as long as that's definitely happening, and we don't reach an agreement for me to stay here longer. Um, and then that's going to be going on for a while. And of course, we're also talking about what happens on the job front. You know, if, if my job is gone, you know, what am I going to be able to find to pay the bills in the interim because 25 reviews at the negotiated rate that we had is not going to be very much money. So I'm going to need to try and find something else if schools don't reopen. Um, so there's a, there's a bunch of uncertainty going on for sure. The good news about the, the change of residence is again, it's, it's another family member. But and instead of staying in the same house, it will be in a, it's an apartment setting. So I'm in good shape. And I'm not worried about anything. And if, if the wor you know if worse came to worse, where I was short like in a month, you know I can get an extension versus living in a different building and a landlord maybe not being able to be as flexible. It's also here in the same town that I live in, so moving will be a bit easier. Although a moving truck will still be required because I have some pretty big pieces. 
So, the book's definitely happening. I ordered the controller off of, uh, off of eBay yesterday. The controller is ready to ship. Um, and we should get here after the quarantine is over. I also got, um... That's probably going to worse. Uh, I also got a, uh, a Wii game that I didn't have, because uh, I got this stuff from Amazon. Um, I got a Wii game that I had looked at, but I, I really never found around here. Oh, I need to stop. Uh, Top Shot Dinosaur Hunter, I think it's called. Um, now, Finding Dino Strike, which is another dinosaur light gun game, um, that game has gone way up in price. I really wanted to get that out. But I couldn't find it for cheap. The only place that had it cheap was GameStop, and they don't even list it in their inventory for stores. Like, yeah, we don't have it. So, that's going to be coming soon. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying that. I, I, I'm a sucker for light gun games. I really am. Did it work? No, it did not. Oh, boy. Huh. That works. Um, so that stuff will be here for June before I wind up leaving or things get resolved, whichever of those that is. Alright. That should do it. Um, so that's the book. Uh, talk a little bit about the job front, too. I, I, I honestly, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Um, that's the kind of thing that's keeping me up late nights, is trying to figure out what's going to happen. And, again, it, it's nobody's fault. Um, but, you know, there was just a story on the news tonight that the state that I live in, which is Massachusetts, they're talking about, like, a, a six million, or a six billion dollar tax shortfall. And schools are paid for out of taxes, so if there's no tax revenue, then you have to start cutting stuff, and that includes schools. And because of where I am on the seniority list, like, I'd be one of the first people to go if they make cuts. So I'm kind of, like, expecting it. I'm trying to set myself up for when the announcement happens, while I'm kind of hoping that I beat the odds and I wind up finding a way to stay set up. If I'm able to stay working, then, you know, I, the fear kind of goes away. Um, but we kind of have to see what happens. And it all, it, it, just, it works out so badly, because by the time I find out that I might be let go, like, I don't know that I'm going to be in line for any of that, uh, that extra unemployment money, which I would just use to squirrel away. Um... And finding other work around here is, is very difficult. As it is for 40 million other people right now. So, um, that's definitely got me spooked. I, like, I literally, when I, when I turn the game systems off and I go to bed, I, like, lie awake. And that's all I think about. Which probably isn't the best way to do it. <laughs> I should probably just stop worrying about what I can't control and just be happy that I'm still working, but my brain doesn't work that way. And it's not like I'm the only one in that boat, so... Ah, oh, every freaking time. And again, there's nothing you can do about that. Get off! No. Nope. This would work, though, because it's been about an hour. I got him over. He does it twice, he'll let me get up because he's being sporting, but that's gonna give me my last opportunity. 
If he gets me again, it's game over. Like, if he knocks me down again. Alright, I got my shot. <laughs> All right. Uh, the rest of the schedule for this week, um, I mentioned it on the stream last night, and I, I, I haven't really changed my mind. I think this week's uh, unsealed game is going to be Devil Kings for the PS2. Um, that will probably... Uh, that'll probably go up uh, around this time tomorrow night or tomorrow morning, as I'm sure it's after midnight already. So that's what I'm looking at for this week. Um, stuff to look forward to is uh, when the uh, PGA Tour gets back underway mid-June. I'm planning on getting uh, on opening at least, uh, or actually it will be another trio of golf games. This time it will be uh, all PGA Tour based. I have a, um, a Genesis game from 1992 to open. I have a Game Boy Advance game to open. I haven't opened too many of those. And I also have a Wii game to open too. So that will be the middle of June. Uh, it's not the Wii game that I uh, have been teasing either. I, I do have a copy of Tiger Woods PGA Tour 12 The Masters, which, by the way, has gotten insane in terms of its value. That game's now over $80 on eBay. Uh, I'm going to be opening that up later this year because they're still supposed to be having the Masters in November, and if they don't, I'll just do it that weekend. Um, so that's going to be coming along soon. Uh, and I do have a few other games to get to, uh, I have some uh, greatest hits games for the PS2 that I'd like to talk about, um, like the original Jack and Daxter. I have uh, I have that. I have a Ratchet and Clank game. I think it's Going Commando. I have that too. Um, so I can talk about those. I have Genji uh, for the PS2, which is a game that was just covered on GameSack pretty recently. I thought about doing that uh, because Joe had spotlighted it on his show, but. Um, I decided against that, and uh, he wasn't the only one to talk about that. He actually, and I'm the same way, I wound up getting that after watching that game get talked about um, by the gaming historians, so, uh, but that's going to wait. So I have that, um, and I still have, like, a lot of different sports games here. I have uh, some baseball games that I want to do that if the baseball season does happen, um, I'm going to start doing some of those. I have some football games, which hopefully if there's football this year, the same thing would apply. And that'll probably be it. Um, I can actually see uh, this year uh, being the last of the run for Unsealed, unfortunately. Um, nah, I probably shouldn't have done that. And it's more just because um, I can't really fund it anymore. It's it's gotten too expensive. Uh, and with the move happening and with things in my life kind of changing around, uh, it's time to walk away. Now, again, as I mentioned last night, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop putting YouTube videos together. Far from it. Um, I still have every intention on doing some retro-related stuff and just keeping the same general idea that I've had where um, I pick a game and I talk about it and its significance to me, so it's, it's more of a personal show than it is like a review show. And depending on how I have the game stuff set up in the new place, um, Maybe I'll have the GX screen behind me like I've had in the past. So that kind of thing is still going to happen. But any ideas that I have for doing new things uh, are going to have to wait a little bit. And so there's some clarity in terms of what's going to be going on for me uh, future-wise. Because I just don't have any and I don't have any answers. Ah. Uh, yeah. 
that will continue for sure. I mean, I, I enjoy doing the YouTube stuff very much. It is not difficult. Um, you know, and I don't do things like editing or things like that, although I probably should. I'd probably get more viewers if I did, but... Um, you know, I don't do editing, I don't do scripting, it doesn't take that long, it just takes the... it just takes me wanting to do it. Uh, so that kind of thing will continue. Just, uh, the unsealed stuff, unfortunately, is just not gonna able to be able to be a thing. I had mentioned on the stream last night that one of the ways that I was gonna try and supplement the unsealed library... Oh, I'm done now. Well, maybe not. Uh, was going to be to go to Retro World Expo this year, uh, where I got some of my sealed games last year. Uh, but I just don't know that that show's going to happen, and if it doesn't, um, that's going to be one less way for me to add stuff to the collection. Because buying sealed games on eBay is starting to become very costly. Because I, I, a lot of the more inexpensive games I've already crossed off the list, I've already opened, and I certainly don't want to do those again. Uh, there's no point to it. With a couple of exceptions, I thought about doing some again for uh, for the PlayStation and PS2 anniversary shows later this year, but by and large I try and stay away from repeats like that. Hey! I mean, it's, it's been a great run for the show. It really has. I mean, I haven't had a project go this long ever. Even with the hiatus that I took when the virus broke out and I needed some time to kind of get my head together. Um, I mean, we're over 150 episodes in now and easily over 200 brand new games opened over the course of that time. I mean, that's insane. Uh, you know, it's not as long-running as, like, APGN or, or GameSack or any of the shows that I've been a fan of for so long, but it's a pretty good run for a guy that isn't really doing it for views or for subs, but just kind of doing it for himself. Please no Coco Savage. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I, but I still have stuff to open... Um, and I definitely will get to that uh, as the, as time goes on, and even after the move happens, if it happens, I, I really am kind of putting the cart before the horse a little bit, but odds are that a move is going to happen. <clears throat> One thing that I'd like to get back around to doing again, and it was going to be something I was going to do more of if I wound up getting... Uh, this new laptop for college was getting back to writing. I have, like, a web domain. I have a, a blog set up that I actually did a lot of writing for in the past, and I got away from doing that. Uh, so I'd really like to get back to doing that at some point and at least take it, you know, and make some use of the money that I've spent on the domain. But the, the old laptop that I'm using, it, it is old. This is, a la this is a laptop that I got when I went back to college in 2012. The fact that the thing still runs is uh, kind of shocking, actually. I would have expected it to have died completely by now. Done. Alright, we're in earshot of the score I set earlier. We'll see. Probably three more matches. But if Coco Savage comes up, <laughs> speak of the devil, that could be it. We'll see. Don't, ah, he turned me around. That's the thing about the the reversals in this game is like you can't do anything. Whoa! Did you see that? Okay. I, I don't know. Hey, if it's a glitch and it's in my favor, I'm gonna take it.
I'm not gonna complain. I'm just gonna go back to my game and... Yeah. That's weird. Ah, you're gonna get me. Face wash. And you can see now that they're much faster in getting to me when I'm down. So I don't even have a way to... Yeah, now I'm done. He's not gonna let me get up. I gotta get out of that corner. it. I might have spoken too soon. I, I got lucky, and now I'm done. <laughs> oh, you're gonna let me- seriously gonna let me get up? Okay. Come on. Nope. That's it. I don't think I can get up. No, done. Ah. Oh well. 275 isn't bad. So, that is Map Mania for the night. We were together for over an hour. It was fun. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, we will do another stream a little bit later this week. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow night or Thursday night. And again, uh, look for the new Unsealed to come out. Uh, later this week as well, when we take a look at Devil Kings from Capcom, which is basically Sengoku Pissarra. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and until the next time, my friends, see you later.